there, Lauren here. I'm the creator of Stickity, and this video is specifically for my pro users. You all have access to core content libraries, which means that you have like all of these graphics that you can throw into student work. Today, we're gonna use these graphics to create a drag and drop activity for math, science, ELA, and social studies to just show off some of those different graphics in different ways. I have my doc open here. Um, and I'll show you kind of how I built this in just a second, but I'll, um, I'll show you how it works. So essentially I've pulled in this graph from Stickity and I've pulled in these coordinates from Stickity as well. And students, basically anyone who has access to um, edit this Google Doc can then move these coordinates, and I know that's not correct, but um, they can move these coordinates to kind of demonstrate their knowledge pretty quickly. This is a wonderful kind of check for understanding piece. It allows them to demonstrate knowledge quickly, and then it also allows you to very quickly grade. So let's say that you're kind of walking around and just checking for understanding. This is so visual that you can kind of see who's got it and who doesn't very, very fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Stickity so that you can see kind of how I built this. The way that you're gonna open up Stickity in Docs is to go to Extensions, Stickity for Docs, and Open. Some of you may already have this installed by your district or by your school, um, or you've installed it already, so that's how you would open it. If you don't see Stickity for Docs here, all you have to do is go to Add-ons and get Add-ons, and you can install it. You just search Stickity and install it from there. Your email address is attached to a pro account, so it will automatically open with all of your access to your pro stickers. So I'm gonna go ahead and click open, and you can see it's going to populate my Stickity Pro over on the side here. We've got all of our normal sticker libraries, feedback, differentiation, etc. And down here is where you can find your, you know, core class content, your English language development, Spanish, French, so my uh, world languages teachers, character and values, there's badges in there, there's just encouragement stickers, etc. So explore these libraries if you haven't already. Um, but I'm going to go into math because that's where I got these stickers and I'm just going to show you how I made this table. In Google Docs, your tables are kind of your best friend. So I'm going to insert just a two uh, column single row table this helps keep our images in place, especially as we add text in a Google Doc. So I've got my tables right here. I'm going to add this graph right here as well. So I'm just gonna click on that. It knows where to go because my cursor is right here. So it's gonna go ahead and insert this. Maybe I want to adjust you know, how wide this is to make extra room for that image or whatever. Now on this side, I'm gonna put my instructions, move the coordinates to the correct spot on the grid. If you wanted to get extra fancy, you could put in maybe an instructions sticker here. There we go. I'm gonna move this down a bit. And then I have my coordinate placement. So again, I'm gonna insert another table just to keep things where they should be. So I'm going to go to insert table, and then I have three coordinates and three um, kind of answers that they need to be able to demonstrate. So this is starting to look just like that above. I'm going to just copy and paste these in since we already have this. And you, I'm sure, are thinking of other ways that you can use this in your class in particular. But watch the way that I treat these coordinates here. So I'm gonna add in blue here, I'm going to add orange and then I'm going to add green. All right. Okay, so I've got my coordinates here. Now, they're not quite ready to move around because they're currently set to be in line with text. So if you move it, it's either going to go next to an image, below an image, etc. But if I select in front of text, it doesn't visually change anything yet, but it allows me to be able to move this around wherever I want it to go, okay? So it allows it to go over anything else that's in there. For students to be able to kind of understand and, and kind of review which coordinates were which, I am gonna go ahead and change the backgrounds of these little sections here so that they can double check their answers and not forget which one was green, orange, etc. 
So then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with these two coordinates, just click, click, and click, click. The rest is up to the students to move this around and demonstrate their knowledge there. So, so fast to do this. I wanna show you some other examples too. So here's a social studies example, exact same thing. I, in my social studies library, I have access to a bunch of different maps. There's some that are labeled, some that are blank, some that have color, et cetera. Um, so you'll see a bunch of those there. We can help ourselves kind of understand maps with these little animations here. And then underneath the maps uh, are little kind of pins or map markers. So I have my three map markers in here. They are all set to move with the text. So if I'm, if you're asking them to label, you know, the beginning of a certain trail or something like that, then this is a great uh, way for them to be able to demonstrate that knowledge quickly. All right. There's all sorts of stickers in here that you can use. The same type of activity. So here's science. Um, and I designed this one a little bit more with the instructions up at the top. I also threw in a drag and drop reminder just to show them like, okay, here's exactly what you're doing. I could label, you know, A, B, C, D, and E with like the, the parts of this diagram here. And all of these labels that you can find in the science section are um, able to move around. So I can move this around maybe to right here. I can move, you know, this one over here. I don't know what I'm labeling. I'm a designer, not a scientist, but, um, but yeah, so it's super easy for students to be able to kind of um, demonstrate their knowledge very, very quickly. This is also something that you can create in Google Slides as well. It just depends on what you wanna be looking at to check for understanding here. And last thing, uh, so ELA, I love um, using these like extra little attention getters here. They're all set to move with the text. So you, all you have to do is select the image, check in front of text, and then make sure that it's set to move with the text. What that means is if I move this to the noun and I then, you know, added some extra content up here, it's still going to move with whatever's inside that table. So I can move all of these to kind of show and demonstrate that I know what I'm talking about um, very, very easily. The ELA library is pretty cool because there's a ton of little pieces that can be moved around for, you know, fill in the blank type of things or drag and drop activities, um, allowing students to kind of, um, you know, just use their skills in a different way and for you to be able to visually check for understanding very, very easily in class. So. If you haven't tried a drag and drop activity with Google Docs and Google Sheets, this is a great time to try it. Just try one maybe as a little mastery check in class and see how that goes. Um, of course, if you're having trouble, reach out or if you are so proud of what you created, share it with me. I would love to see what people are making with this tool. Happy stickering, happy designing, happy creating. Have a wonderful rest of your week.